Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. It's finally feeling like fall around here and we are gonna be making some fall recipes to prep for our dinner party we're having tomorrow. We are doing a garlic peeling party around here because we have over 500 heads of garlic I need peeled and I need help. So I am enlisting the help of my friends and my family and they are gonna come help me peel a bunch of garlic and so I'm gonna feed them a fall feast. So what we're gonna make today is I have two whole chickens that I just went and picked up and we are going to cut them apart and we are going to make a 40 garlic chicken recipe. If memory serves me correct, I believe this is a Julia Child recipe. I could be completely wrong, but I will link the recipe that I'm kind of following down below. I read a bunch of different ones and I'm gonna kind of make up my own because we are peeling garlic. I thought it'd be fun to make this recipe. I've never made it before. We are gonna serve it with potatoes and the recipe says to dice potatoes into one inch cubes. Well, I have these little baby potatoes. These are Butterball, the variety Butterball. So I thought it'd be fun just to use these whole little potatoes. We got a bunch of garlic, some onions. This is me going grocery shopping downstairs and then some chicken broth. And then I grabbed a bottle of white wine because we're gonna need that for the recipe as well. We are on a mission to cook some of Josh's grandma's recipes. She gave me a whole stack of her recipe cards and one of her recipes she gave me is a pumpkin roll. I've never made a pumpkin roll before. And together, we went ahead and started processing some of the pumpkins we grew together out in the garden. And I thought that would be a perfect thing for this fall feast that we're having. Today, it's raining outside. And it hasn't rained here in almost 90 days. We've had one day of rain in 90 days. Now it's supposed to rain for the foreseeable future and I'm so excited about it. I have never looked so forward to fall in my life before. So I'm just so grateful to be able to host a party at my house, feed people with some beautiful food. Some I grew, some I bought at the grocery store and we can just enjoy getting a huge project done together and I can feed them really well. So for the first thing I wanna do is get the pumpkin roll in the oven so that can be cooking. The recipe says we need to preheat the oven to 375. We are also gonna be making some no need bread and I'm gonna do an experiment. In our mixer, we're gonna start by adding three eggs and we're gonna get these beating. The recipe says they need to beat for five minutes. I'm already not following the recipe correctly because it says that we need to, in a stand mixer, beat eggs and sugar. So we need to add the sugar, which is one cup of white sugar. And then that makes more sense because the sugar and the eggs will beat together and get nice and fluffy. We are also going to make today, or for the party, we're going to prep it today. So today's Friday and the garlic peeling party is on Saturday. But I'm going to get quite a few things done today so I don't have to worry about them tomorrow. So we're going to get the pumpkin roll done today. We're going to prep the chicken. We're going to make two loaves, or maybe three loaves, of no need bread. One with all-purpose flour, one with einkorn flour, and one with spelt flour, because I've never used einkorn flour or spelt flour before, and I really want to see how well those work with the recipe. So we're going to do a little bit of recipe testing, so we're going to start that tonight. And then for the dinner tomorrow, we are also going to have a really yummy salad. I'm going to candy up some walnuts or pecans, depending on what I can find, and that is the menu. So now that we have our eggs and our sugar, we're gonna beat this for five minutes. While this is beating, I am going to drain off the liquid that drained out of our pumpkin that we roasted together. And I'm gonna blend up this pumpkin so that it's not stringy. When you make pumpkin puree or you roast up a pumpkin, sometimes it can be stringy. That's just the nature of it. So we're gonna use a hand blender to blend that up. So you can see how light and fluffy that is. That makes more sense to put the sugar in there. So the next ingredient we're gonna add is two thirds cup of our pumpkin puree and it's nice and smooth now. There's no stringy bits in it at all. 
And then a teaspoon of lemon juice. I just cut a little piece off of a lemon and we'll just squeeze that in there. We're gonna mix that up. Now I kind of feel when I make Ruth's recipes, that's Josh's grandma's name, that I'm on the Great British Bake Off because she doesn't put very many written directions on her recipes. So I did do some Googling and finding out other pumpkin roll recipes to make sure that I am doing this correctly. So now we are going to add three fourths cup of all purpose flour. I did call her on the phone and was asking her some questions about the recipe and she couldn't quite remember the answers to my questions because she said it had been so long since she'd made it, but she said it's fantastic. So I'm really excited. I'm excited to challenge myself making a roll cake. I've never done this before. So we just added three fourths cup of flour. We need one teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm excited to show you a trick that you all gave me for how to line the sheet pan we're gonna cook this cake in. All right, so we have our baking powder. And then this calls for cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. Well, I just made up a bunch of fresh pumpkin pie spice. I have a recipe for this. I'm just gonna go ahead and add pumpkin pie spice because it has all these ingredients in it. And we're gonna add two teaspoons. Actually, three teaspoons, and this is a half teaspoon, so I'm gonna add six of these. Oh my goodness, it smells so good in here. I'm so happy that it's raining outside. We have all the smells of fall. Oh, my favorite time of year, my absolute favorite time of year. And now we need to add salt. We need to open a new bag of salt. So for the salt, we need to add one teaspoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in there. And then this recipe doesn't call for vanilla, but can I make a recipe that doesn't have vanilla in it? Probably not. So we're gonna add just a splash of vanilla. And then we are also not gonna add any fat to this recipe. The only fat in it comes from the eggs, which, you know, there's no oil or butter or anything. So that's it. That was that simple. Let me reread this recipe card to make sure we didn't miss anything. Eggs, sugar, cooked pumpkin, lemon juice, flour, baking powder, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, salt. That's it, all right, let's mix this up. That's our cake batter, so that's done. We do need to prepare our jelly roll pan, so this is 10 inches by 15 inches. And you all gave me this tip, so take your parchment paper and start by preparing our jelly roll pan and then what we need to do according to all the recipes I looked online said to do is spray our pan with some non-stick spray that might be too much but I don't want it to stick then we're going to take a little flour in a colander and we're going to dust it over the whole thing so I'm making a mess on my counter but that's okay sometimes Oh, let me reread the recipe. Yeah, it says flour. The next part we're gonna do is gonna be with powdered sugar. This is very fussy, and I am not a fussy baker, but I want this jelly roll to turn out. I'm so excited to try this. I love trying new things. So like I said, we have our oven preheated. And this cake does not bake very long. It only has to bake for 15 minutes. So I'm gonna set the timer for 13, just to be on the safe side. Is this a Genoese sponge? I feel like, Josh and I really like watching The Great British Bake Off, and I feel like when there's a cake that doesn't have any fat in it, that they call that a Genoese sponge, but I could totally be just making that up. I have no idea. Okay. 
Here she goes into the oven. We have to do one more thing to prep. So as soon as this comes out of the oven, we need to roll it. So what you're supposed to do for that is take a clean dishcloth and powdered sugar, and you're going to powder sugar the whole thing liberally. And the powdered sugar is supposed to help it from sticking. And just like that, we have our dessert going. So what we need to do now is clean up our mess. I like to try to clean as I go so that it doesn't become overwhelming when we're done spending time in the kitchen. And then we are going to process our chickens so we can start our chicken recipe, which I'm so excited about as well. Before we deal with the chickens, I want to go ahead and preserve up this pumpkin. I was trying to figure out how I was going to do that, whether I wanted to freeze dry it or just freeze it. And I came to the conclusion that I feel like we'll probably use it up relatively quickly. So I think freezing it is probably the best option. I don't think it's something that I want to go into any sort of long-term long -term food storage. So I have a couple Ziploc bags out. I really wish I had quart size. I only had gallon size. And I'm gonna go ahead and put two cup measure in each one of these bags. I'll write on what it is, and then we'll plop these in the freezer. And we can use these anytime. We can use them for savory dishes. We can, I can use it for desserts whatever we decide to cook with it. I think I might only get two. So I am gonna freeze these completely flat because what that does is it allows the pumpkin to thaw really quickly. If I was to freeze that in a solid ball, it would take a long time to thaw, but if you freeze it like this, it will thaw in minutes, minutes. So let's see how much, I think we only have about one cup here. Man, I really wish I had a smaller bag. I don't, I hate wasting a quart bag on just one cup. Oh well. So if you traveled with my mom and I to Virginia, we went to this Italian restaurant and we had some tortellinis. They weren't called tortellinis, but they were like a large tortellini and they were a butternut squash tortellini with brown butter and sage. And they were so good. So we're doing a Friendsgiving early November with my friends, and we always do a themed dinner. And this year we're gonna do, it might be pumpkin, it might be butternut squash, stuffed, I'm gonna make tortellinis, I'm gonna, I've never made them before, so it's gonna be fun. And then my friend's husband's gonna make tiramisu, and then I need to come up with some other Italian side dishes to make, and I'm really excited about that. So I know that some of this pumpkin is probably gonna be used for that. I guess they'll be pumpkin tortellinis, not butternut squash tortellinis, but pretty much the same thing. I'm just gonna plop these in the freezer to freeze nice and flat. It's perfect. And now we're gonna get going on the chicken. I have broken down chickens many of a time, but it's been probably two years, three years since I've done it. So I am watching some YouTube videos on how to do it and our timer went off for our cake. I think I'm gonna give it another two minutes. So those, that cake has been in there for 13 minutes, and it said 13 to 15 minutes, so we're gonna give it two more minutes, and then we're gonna take this out of the oven. After watching those chicken butchering videos, I think I have a handle and remember how to break down a chicken. So before I do that, I wanted to go ahead and make sure we took the cake out of the oven so that I wouldn't get all chicken in me before we took the cake out of the oven. So what the recipe says is when you push on the cake and it springs back, that's how you know it's done. And now what we're supposed to do is immediately turn it out onto our powdered sugar surface. And I don't really know how to do that effectively. Okay, good. And then it says carefully remove, beautiful, the, uh, our parchment. And then this is where it gets a little funny. 
we're going to immediately roll, I think our cake's done, our cake into a log with the skinny side first. All right, now what we do is we put this rolled cake onto a drying rack or a cooling rack and we let this cool completely. That was relatively painless and easy. I've been, always been so intimidated about doing this recipe and so far so good. But, uh, turn the oven off. So now let's get to these chickens finally. So you can ask your butcher to break down your chickens for you if you go to your local grocery store. But I went to Costco this morning to get these chickens and I don't know if they will do it for you. So I am going to do it. And I think it's good to remember how to do it. So the first thing we do is we slice around the legs and you can kind of push back and there's a joint that you can feel. You kind of pop that and then you cut right through the joint. And we have that piece there. This is a really beautiful chicken. I'm gonna take a few paper towels and I'm gonna line this cookie sheet with them so that we can keep our chicken nice and dry. So when we sear them, they're nice and dry. So right here we have a drumstick that I cut. We have a chicken thigh and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You take your chicken quarter that we just did and there's a line of fat right here and that's right where the joint is. And you can follow that line and you can kind of pop and cut. And you've got your chicken thigh here and your chicken drumstick here. We're making great progress on this. Pretty easy to get the wings. I don't think we're gonna cook the wings in this recipe. I'm gonna use the wings to make broth. So we'll leave those actually on the chicken, but we need to cut the chicken breast off. You see this line right here? We're gonna follow that line with our kitchen shears. And this is what we're gonna to use to cut the back off. So now we have the back and the wings here. This is not gonna to go to waste. I'm gonna make chicken stock out of this and I'll pull the meat off this. But we have our chicken breast here. And there is a little bone right here that we wanna kind of cut a little bit with our knife. So now we have our two beautiful breasts here and they're too big for one serving. So I am going to just cut down the center of them. and we're going to divide that into two. So I'm gonna link the video I watched how to do this down in the description box for you. I think it was like a four minute video because I am not an expert chicken butcher, but I don't want you to be intimidated about trying new things because that's how we learn. I used to be really comfortable with this process and now, you know, I have to, it's just like anything else, you kind of have to get back in the swing of it. I have a Ziploc bag here that I'm gonna put these two chicken backs in and also the necks. And then next time I need to make some chicken broth, I'll go ahead and pull that out and we'll make some broth out of that. You definitely don't want to waste that. So now we have our chicken all prepped and ready. I'm just gonna set this here for just a few minutes. I'm gonna take a second to sanitize my counter, get it all nice and clean, and then we're gonna prep our vegetables so that as soon as we're done pan searing these and getting these ready for the next step where we need these vegetables, we will be ready and we have our entire mise en place ready to go for us. I picked out the smaller heads to use today because we're gonna be planting garlic here pretty soon and I want to save the really large heads and cloves of garlic to plant 
because the clove size directly correlates with how big the actual head of garlic will get when it's growing. That's how much energy it has to produce a head of garlic. So I want to use these smaller cloves of garlic in cooking. So hopefully throughout the years of me growing my garlic, I'll save the largest cloves, I'll plant those so I'll get large heads, save the largest cloves, plant those, get large heads, and I can continue to try to get the biggest heads of garlic possible. And the reason I want the biggest heads of garlic possible is because the bigger the clove of garlic, the less work it is to peel. And you get more bang for your buck for the time you spent peeling the garlic. And you know, I'm looking at this and I think these six or eight heads that I just did probably are enough for today's recipe. Well, no, we'll do one more. This is a lot of garlic, but it's basically gonna become really sweet. It's not gonna be, from what I understand, the spicy garlic flavor because we're gonna roast it in the oven for so long. And then we're gonna make that bread and you take these garlic roasted cloves and you smear it on your homemade bread and it's just supposed to be divine. So that's what we're going for today. Because these garlic heads are so fresh, I have found the easiest way to peel them is just to smash them and then the papers come off a lot easier that way. I've tried the bowl method where you shake them and I don't know if it's because my garlic is so fresh that it just doesn't, the paper doesn't come off because it hasn't dried out enough and the cloves haven't shrunk around the paper. So once you smash them, then the paper just kind of comes right off. The only thing I really don't like when it comes to peeling garlic is how sticky everything is and then the paper stick. I guess it's tedious too, but it's worth it. I'm just gonna take a few minutes here and get all the papers off. When I try new recipes like this, what I like to do is read three or four or five recipes and then kind of come up with my own. One of, or a couple of the recipes say to leave the papers on the garlic cloves when you roast them. And I am choosing to peel them because some of the recipes said to peel them because like I was saying earlier, we're gonna make this homemade bread and these garlic cloves are gonna roast and they're gonna get really, really sweet. And when it comes to eating the garlic cloves, I think it'll be a more pleasant experience to kind of scoop them out of the yummy broth that's gonna be made while the chickens roast and spread it onto our bread if they're already peeled and we don't have to go through the effort of peeling the garlic at the dinner table. I probably smashed some of these a little bit too much and they're kind of breaking apart, but I think that will be okay. So we have a whole bowl of garlic ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is get our potatoes washed so that we can put these right in to the pan once we're ready for them. Some of them have some marks on them, so that probably will be composted. I think a mouse got to that one, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and wash these really nice ones. If I see any bad spots or anything, I'll take a knife to them and we'll cut those off. Now, none of the recipes I found called for onions, but I have a very difficult time. I cut a little bit extra off the bottom of that because there was kind of a bad spot on it cooking anything without onions. So I am gonna dice up these onions and we're gonna add two onions and I'm gonna take a few layers off that one just because kind of some bad spots on it. But we can definitely work around that, no problem. Let's see, I think I'll just dice them like that. Onion peels have a lot of flavor in them and they add a really nice dark rich color to your chicken broth. So you don't need to always throw them out. You can definitely save them and use them. All right, now we have all of our components ready for our chicken. Because I am doubling this recipe, we are going to make 
this chicken in our roaster pan. And I am excited to use this for this because I can brown a whole lot more chicken at one time in this roaster pan. Because when you're browning meat, you don't want to overcrowd the pan. And this is gonna give us plenty of room here to get our chicken browned. We're gonna add a little bit of avocado oil. You could use whatever kind of oil you wanna use. And then we need to season our chicken that we prepped earlier. So while we wait for the oil to heat up, I'm gonna salt and pepper just one side of the chicken. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna salt and pepper the other side. So you want your chicken or whatever meat you are searing to be nice and dry so that it doesn't steam when it hits the pan. You want it to brown. That's why it's good to keep them on a paper towel. That was salt, now we have pepper. I was distracted cleaning and this got a little hot, so I'm gonna spread the oil out a little bit. We need to get the chicken on here. So I'm going to take our chicken that we seasoned, seasoned side down. I don't want to overcrowd this pan, so I'm going to give a little bit of space for every piece of chicken. So we'll have to do this in two batches. So now what we're going to do is season this side of the chicken. We're going to do both salt and pepper on each side. So we're trying to get some really good color on this side. So that needs to cook for quite a bit longer there. We're getting there, but not quite. I think we are there on some of these. Yes, you see how much color we have on that? That's perfect. It's nice browning. Look at that, beautiful. We're not looking, oh, that one's Perfect, that's pepper right there, so that's not burnt. We are looking at creating some browning. We're not looking at cooking this chicken all the way through. That's not at all the intent here. So look at that color. So we're gonna pull these off and then we're going to fill the rest of our dish in our pan here. So now what we're supposed to do is add a little bit of butter. This is for flavor, not for like non-stick or anything. We don't have any butter in here. And then we're gonna add our garlic. We're just gonna saute that for just a minute. We do not want this garlic to burn. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add this onion too. We're going to cook that for just a minute. All right, that is perfect. We do need to season this though because we're seasoning every single part of our dish. Salt and pepper. And then we need to get this out of this pan before we burn the garlic. I maybe didn't need to put the onions in there, I don't know. We're kind of making this up as we go along. I need another bowl. Now we need to be really careful because we're going to put wine. So go into our pan and that can catch on fire so you want to be careful when you're putting alcohol into a hot pan we're gonna have this reduced by half that's gonna cook the alcohol off of it and then we are going to add some chicken broth in just a minute get a lot of questions about this canning jar opener this is called a pry a lid 
Pry, P R Y A at Lid, L I D. They don't make these anymore. This was a gift in my P.O. box, but they do, you can usually find them on eBay and things like that. So if you want one of these really handy, nifty can openers or jar openers, go ahead and look on eBay and you might be able to find yourself one. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we're going to let that cook. So when I first started dating Josh 10 years ago or so, I don't know, a long time ago, I was really getting into cooking and I found this way of cooking. It's a technique that I don't do that much anymore, but I found it when I was dating Josh and it's called braising. And if you put braising recipes into Pinterest, you can find so many of them. And that's basically what we're doing with this chicken. We're gonna braise it in the oven. Braising is where you usually cover your meat about halfway and you put it in the oven and you cook it low and slow. And I think it's a really undervalued or underutilized, even I need to start doing it more because it creates the most incredible flavor and depth of flavor that you just don't get when you're just roasting something or putting something in a crock pot. I never grew up eating dishes that were braised and they are so, so good. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more wine and I'm gonna let this cook down. I was at Costco today, I had to go buy those chickens and they had a wine advent calendar. I almost bought it, but because we don't know when I will be able to drink wine again, I decided not to, but I thought that would be so fun. They were these little half bottles and so it's only two glasses of wine, so you and your partner could share every night. You could try a new wine. And I didn't buy it, but it looked like a lot of fun. It's hard to see, but it's definitely cooked down by half. We're gonna add about the same amount of chicken broth. This is homemade chicken broth, but you could use whatever you have. I'm gonna put some of the potatoes, or all the potatoes, in here now. Those are just gonna be on the bottom of our pan. Then we're gonna take our chicken and we're gonna nestle it in here. Around all of these other goodies that we have. I'm actually gonna turn the stove off. Now that we have all of our chicken nestled in amongst our potatoes, you can see, like I said, we're not trying to cook that chicken all the way through right now. When we put this in the oven and braise it, that's when we want all this chicken to be cooked through. We're gonna add our onions and our garlic. I'm gonna try to nestle some of these onions underneath here. We have a few more things to add. We're gonna add just a few pats of butter. I'm gonna break it up into a few different sections. So maybe total two or three tablespoons of butter that we'll cut into small pieces. And then the recipe's called for fresh herbs. And normally I would go out into my garden and grab those, but clearly I don't have a garden here yet. We met with our landscaper yesterday for the first time to start going over some of those plans, which was really exciting. We have a lot to figure out, but we've got a ways to go before we are gonna have our own fresh herbs. And when I was at the store today, I did look at buying some fresh herbs, thyme and rosemary and tarragon, but they were so expensive. I could not justify spending $3.99 for a little packet. And I do have some dried herbs from the garden from last year, so I thought, you know what? Dried herbs are just as good. We're gonna go ahead and use those. So I'm just sprinkling on a little bit of thyme, not too much. And then we also are gonna sprinkle on some rosemary and I don't have tarragon. I've never grown tarragon, I would love to. I don't even know if I've ever even tried tarragon. So it's something that I need to try. And I did look for tarragon. I was, if they had had it at the store, I actually was gonna buy that because I've, I've never cooked with it before. And I thought that would be fun, but I was at Walmart and they didn't have any. So we're just gonna skip it. So I'm just breaking up a little bit of rosemary I love the flavor of rosemary, but it can overpower things really quickly, I think. So we're just gonna put a little bit of that. And now what we're gonna do is clean up 
and we're gonna get going on our salad. I want this to cool quite a bit before we put this in the refrigerator. This is done until tomorrow when we cook this in the oven. We're gonna braise all of this goodness. Tomorrow we may need to add a little bit more broth or wine when it goes in the oven, but I'm gonna cover it with foil and we'll bake it tomorrow. So I'm gonna make some candied pecans or walnuts. I need to go downstairs and look in the freezer to see what I have. We're gonna make a balsamic vinaigrette honey dressing with candied nuts. And we're gonna also pickle some onions because I think that brightness, the acidity of that salad will pair well with the really richness and complex flavors of this 40 or eight, I don't know if I actually peeled 80 cloves of garlic, but this really garlicky, delicious, rich, comforting, cozy dish. I ran downstairs and I got some chopped walnuts. So we're gonna make some candied walnuts. I grabbed a red onion to pickle. And then I grabbed our emmer flour and our einkorn flour because we're gonna make some no need bread using these flours. But before we do that, we're gonna make some candied walnuts. In here I have walnuts. And then I'm going to put in here an egg white. That egg white is just gonna be dumped on top of the walnuts. And then we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of sugar, not too much, a good pinch of salt. Mix that together. And now we're gonna pour that onto our cookie sheet. And then we're gonna spread this out. And this is gonna go into a 300 degree oven until it's nicely toasted. My oven isn't totally preheated, but I don't really care. I'm just gonna get this in there and we will come back to that when it's done. Now to make the pickled onions, this could not be any easier. We're going to slice up a red onion as thin as possible. And we're gonna put our onions into a mason jar. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of sugar, a good pinch of salt, and then we're gonna top it with red wine vinegar. And that's it. We're just gonna put a lid on it, shake it a little bit, and into the fridge that goes, and that's how easy it is to make pickled onions. So we're gonna stick this in the fridge and this will be ready for us. Now we need to make, I was going to wait until tomorrow to frost our pumpkin roll, but I was just looking at it and trying to unroll it and it's pretty stiff. And I think if I let it sit overnight, it's gonna get so stiff that I'm not going to be able to unroll it without breaking it. So we're gonna go ahead and frost it tonight, which I was not planning on doing. <laughs> I need to wash out my mixing bowl so that we can make the frosting in the mixing bowl. That's kind of why I was planning on doing this tomorrow so that I could do these dishes tonight and then I would have a clean bowl and I wouldn't have to kind of like stop and do dishes in between my food prep. But we'll make it work, no big deal. I would rather kind of switch my plan around a little bit and have a really pretty yummy pumpkin roll then be stubborn headed about it and stick with my plan. I was gonna have my butter and cream cheese also sit out overnight so that it would be nice and soft for me, but it's cold. I just took it out of the fridge. So I am gonna have to pop the cream cheese and the butter in the microwave for just a minute so that it's, I'm gonna be able to make a frosting out of it. Grandma Ruth's recipe says, ah, getting my sleeve in the pumpkin. To use seven ounces of cream cheese, a block of cream cheese is eight ounces, I think. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just use the whole block because what am I gonna do with one ounce of cream cheese? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we're just gonna use the whole block. I don't think anyone will mind a little extra cream cheese frosting in their pumpkin roll. Well, I'm rereading the recipe and it says six ounces of cream cheese, which is two ounces less than this. And if you were here 
yesterday when we were in the kitchen, I actually made a banana cake for my mom's birthday that we're doing. We're doing a combined my mom and my nephew's birthday on Sunday at my sister's house. And I am responsible to make a bunch of bread for that party and a banana cake. So I think I am gonna just use the six ounces of cream cheese because I'm gonna have to make cream cheese frosting for the banana cake. And I will go ahead and just use those two ounces for that cake. But I am gonna pop this in the microwave for about 30 seconds along with four tablespoons of butter. So in our stand mixer, we're gonna add our butter cream cheese, one cup of powdered sugar, and a splash of vanilla. That is beautiful. I whipped it for a few minutes on high so it would get nice and light and fluffy. And this honestly is the moment of truth here where we're gonna start unrolling this thing and you can kind of see how it's stiff and it wants to stay in its shape. So I feel like if I refrigerated this and it's cracking a little bit, I probably should have done this when it was still a little bit warm, but we are learning how to make this together for the first time. And all my spatulas are dirty now, so I'm gonna use an offset spatula, but I gotta figure out how to get all this out of here. My nice rubber spatulas are dirty and I don't feel like washing those right now. This is a really fluffy cream cheese frosting. It's gonna be very cream cheesy -y because it only has one cup of powdered sugar in it. So I'm just kind of tucking that frosting up in that fold. I don't think we want to overstuff it because it'll ooze out. We're just gonna try to evenly spread this frosting throughout this roll. I have a little bit more frosting in my bowl, but I don't think I want to add any more to it. Let's try to roll this up. Oh my goodness, it's working. It's working! Oh, friends, we may have done it. Friends, we may have just pulled off a pumpkin roll. I'm gonna wrap this in saran wrap and I'm gonna throw it in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow before we slice it and serve it, I'll dust it with one more dusting of powdered sugar. But oh, look at that. I mean, it's not beautiful right now, but I think once we cut into it, I think we're gonna have a roll. I think we may have passed the test. All right, that was easy enough. I don't know why I was gonna put that off until tomorrow. That only took about 30 seconds to do. Now, let's see, let's go ahead and get our dough for our bread, our noni dough. And I have three bowls here, but I should check on the nuts before, oh no, those have a while to go, before we make the bread. So let's get our bread going. I have three bowls here, because we're gonna make three different kinds of bread. Same bread recipe, but with three different flours. So what we need to do first is add one and a half cups of water to each one of these. This is about 110 degrees. Gonna need to get a little bit more. That's a half, so I need one more cup. Now we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of yeast to each one. In this first stainless steel bowl, we're gonna add three and a quarter cups of plain, all-purpose, unbleached flour. This is what I normally use when I make this recipe. In this bowl, we're gonna add our sprouted emmer flour. This smells really good. So this is a whole wheat flour. So we're gonna add three and a quarter cups. I'm gonna keep everything the same measurement wise here. And then in this one, we're gonna add our einkorn flour. And I'm gonna add three and a quarter cups as well. So one thing that's interesting about this einkorn flour is I can tell that it's denser. Now we're gonna add a good pinch of salt. 
I'm so excited we're finally doing this. I've been wanting to test these different flowers out for a long time. I just haven't had the kind of chance to do it. And the reason I want to do this for this party that's coming up tomorrow, the garlic peeling party, is because I am responsible to make this bread for the birthday party that's on Sunday. And I thought it would be fun if we did some recipe testing tonight for tomorrow, for Saturday, so that I know that maybe for Sunday, we're gonna try something new. So for this recipe, all you do is mix these four simple ingredients together, flour, salt, yeast, and water, until you get a shaggy dough, and then we cover it and we let it sit for 12 to 18 hours. Hmm, definitely this sprouted, I don't know about this, this totally different texture. I'll bring you in and show you. This is the uh, Emmer flour. There's not very much gluten in this. It's it very, um, let me show you. So this is our all-purpose flour, and you can see how there's kind of like some stringiness to it. There's some pull. That's our gluten in there that's doing that, the protein, versus this. It just like breaks apart. So that's odd. This might be a complete flop. I'm gonna get it all mixed in together. That is so interesting. So that's all mixed in. That's actually stickier. I thought this was gonna be drier than our all-purpose flour because it's whole wheat, but it's not. It's very sticky. So let's go on to our einkorn flour. This might be kind of a, a mixture between the all-purpose. Yeah, I can see a little bit of gluten formation. There's a little bit of pull to it. The einkorn flour is definitely more yellow. I don't know if it's showing up for you, but compared to the white flour, there's definitely a more yellowy hue to this dough, and it's really pretty. It doesn't smell any different to me than the whole wheat flour, but that also absorbed the water a lot more, which I was kind of surprised because it was denser. I thought that it wasn't gonna absorb the water as much. Well, there we have it. We have our einkorn, our emmer, and our all-purpose. This all-purpose surprisingly needs a little bit of kneading. Not a lot, but there's definitely, the flour didn't absorb in the water as much as the other two, which I would have completely, if I was a bedding person, I would have thought these two would not have absorbed the water the same as the whole wheat, or as the white flour, but here we go. So it just needs to be mixed in enough to where there's not really any dry spots. It's perfect. We're gonna cover each one of these in some saran wrap, and then they're gonna sit on the counter all, ooh, all night long. And then we need to wrap up our pumpkin roll. I did wanna show you that I took our nuts and I mixed them up once while they were baking and I think they are done yeah they're nice and toasted so these will cool and harden these are perfect I think we have done enough cooking for the night we made together if you were with us yesterday I made meatloaf and cauliflower and those TikTok parmesan mat uh, potatoes so Josh and I are gonna have that for dinner tonight so I don't need to worry about cooking for dinner I do need to unload and load the dishwasher because my sink is full of dishes. We have our three doughs here rising. This is now cool, so I'm gonna wrap this in foil and get this in the refrigerator. Our nuts are done. Our, what else do we do? Our pumpkin roll is done. Our um, pickled onions are done. So tomorrow we need to bake all of this. We are going to be braiding garlic, peeling garlic, making the dressing for the salad and pulling this whole dinner together. We're gonna to be doing a taste test on this bread. And so I hope you come back tomorrow and join us as we kind of pull this whole party together. I love having people over. I love sharing my home. I love feeding people. And this is how I show them love through my kitchen. And the fact that they're gonna come help me peel garlic, I just am excited to be able to share with them 
a really delicious dinner, hopefully, as long as everything turns out. So if you are new, I hope you come back and join us tomorrow as we pull this whole dinner party together. I think I'm gonna probably pull together some appetizers too, so people have something to munch on while they are peeling garlic for me. Once we peel and braid all the garlic, then I'm gonna turn it into powdered garlic, confit garlic, garlic infused oil, and because people who came and helped me peel the garlic, I am gonna share that love with them once I do those projects. So I invite you to subscribe if you're new. I can pop up a couple of videos here you can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.